Okay, we're going to be looking at three ancient schools of thought in Eastern Asia, in East Asia. The first one is Confucius, and it's based on his thoughts. He's a philosopher who was born about 550 BC, and he was living in China in a time where there's a lot of disorder, a lot of suffering, a lot of warfare. And he said, something's got to change. So he develops this philosophy, this idea, and the point of it is to restore peace, it's to bring harmony to the people of China. He uh, ends up doing this through writings in, um, in a collection of books, and he basically comes up with this idea, and it, this is a philosophy of society. It's more focused on how a society should funca um, function rather than an individual. And it's not based on any religion, it's not based on, um, it's not based on does God exist, who is God. Basically Confucius says those kinds of questions don't matter. We need to focus on the here and now, living for today. Well here are the five relationships. You have the ruler and then you have the subject. You have the father and you have the son. You have the older brother, younger brother, husband and wife older friend or senior friend and junior friend. These relationships, each person has a role in these relationships. The person in authority um, has control over, obviously that's what authority means to some extent, is superior to the per people down here who are inferior. Now a lot of people would think, oh well the Confucius is saying that these people are better than these people. That, that's not true. Confucius would say that they're equal even though one is superior and one is inferior um, in terms of superior and inferior in terms of who has the power who has the control well I have a son um, I am superior to my son I have power over my son but in no way would I say that I'm more important than my son um, Confucius actually says that says, says this quote here if a ruler himself is upright all will go well without orders. But if he himself is not upright, even though he gives orders, they will not obey. So the point that he's saying is you need to you need to look at how you're functioning as a leader because you need to do it the right way. Um, here is the most important relationship and this is really still important in China today. It's the father-son, it's the children owing respect to their parents. You still see that today, and here's a um, an older man, and you can see his son right here still taken care of. This idea of putting your parents in a nursery, or not a nursery, a nursing home, and just kind of washing your hands of it, that would not fly at all with Confucius. This idea that fathers have kids, and they don't invest a lot of their time and energy into raising these kids, Confucius would have none of that. He would say a lot of the problems we see in our society is simply because fathers are not being fathers and that is a huge Confucius would say the most important role a father being a father and his ideas actually do bring restore harmony into China and they're still carried on today um, education is really emphasizing Confucianism this idea is ah, I'm going to get a D in this class a C is okay with me um, whatever it's not important I'm not going to do a lot of work. That that's not that's something that Confucius would be completely against, and that's something that the Chinese culture in general is completely against. You work hard in education, you take your education very important. Here's another philosophy. It's called Taoism, or it's been also pronounced Taoism. Taoism is basically this idea that there it's a lot like Hinduism, a lot like Buddhism. There's this force, this natural order, this flow of the universe that is around everything and it cannot be explained or put into words. Here's a quote. The Tao that can be named is not the Tao. So I'm not going to try to name the Tao because you can't put it in words. Basically, um, Taoism focuses on this thing called the Wu Wei. The Wu Wei means achieve without achieving. It means all things should come natural to you in your life. You shouldn't have to be struggling. You shouldn't have to be um, really trying in your life to make it be successful. Everything should just flow peacefully. And the choices you make, now I don't have any specific examples, 
Um, the choices you make should just be yourself. You should be yourself. The power is in yourself. You should live a simple life and you, you should you should free your mind they would say let me give you some examples this idea of all things should come natural to you this idea that doing nothing in such a way that all is accomplished that's, that's a good quote doing nothing in such a way that all is accomplished achieving without achieving here are um, some examples of that water your life should be like water you see the water coming down this this river the water that's coming down isn't fighting, it's not resisting, it's just naturally flowing. Your life should be like this water naturally flowing down a river. Another thing is a great example is from the movie Kung Fu Panda. Uh, here in Kung Fu Panda, there's this scroll, and in this scroll, it tells you how to get ultimate power, how to, how to get ultimate um, control, and Kung Fu Panda has this scroll and the, and 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 the scroll is going to teach you these things. Well, at the end of the movie, he opens up the scroll and you know, you're expecting some magic potions, you're expecting some chant to invoke the gods or something like that. Well, it ends up just being a mirror and the Kung Fu Panda ends up seeing himself and he realizes he himself is the power. He himself is where ultimate all the energy that he needs comes from. That's a huge part of Taoism. You alone, within yourself, don't fake it. Find the true energy in yourself and all will go well. Here's another example of analogy. Here's the shadow. There's a story in Taoism where this guy was afraid of his shadow. So he would run as fast as he could. He would run as fast as he could. He would try to get away from his shadow, but he couldn't and he ended up falling uh, falling over in exhaustion and he ended up um, falling over in exhaustion under a tree and he realized when he fell down under the tree the shadow was gone the point of the story is if he would have just relaxed let go sat down under a tree in the shade he wouldn't have seen the shadow anymore if you take your fears if you take your conflicts and you don't try to force it and you let go and become do what is natural to you those conflicts will go away um, I'm not going to do the butcher analogy I'm going to give you another analogy that would be easier for you to understand there's something called um, chi running which is based on the idea of Taoism and th this idea is um, this idea hey Ethan I'll be with you in a second okay this idea is when you run, you lean forward, and as you lean forward, you let the gravity take you. You know, if you're standing st still and you start leaning forward, um, what ends up happening is you have to take a step. And because you have to take a step, you, you ultimately end up start running yourself. The point is, when you lean forward, you, ha you use the forces of nature to guide you to run. That's just a small example of Taoism in today's culture. They call it chi running, where you're running and you're leaning really forward. Here's a story about a butterfly. It's called the butterfly dream. A man had a dream that was so real, and he dreamed that he was a butterfly. And, and you know how you have those dreams when it's really real and you wake up, you're like, am I still dreaming? Um, for instance, I was dreaming that I had to, had to kill zombies um, after watching the show Walking Dead, and I was up on my bed shooting zombies when I woke up. And it's just so real that you don't know if you're still dreaming. A Taoist would say, hey, do you ever think of life like this? That when you dreamed, when this guy dreamed that he was a butterfly, that maybe he really is a butterfly? And the other things are the dream? How do you know the dream isn't real? And the part when you think you're not dreaming, that that is the dream. The point of that is with Taoism, what is reality and what is not reality is really fuzzy and you can see that in the movie the matrix the whole idea is is this a dream is this reality i can't tell um, let's talk about star wars for a second you know yoda he ends up lifting that ship out of the swamp in star wars he's not using any any energy if you watch that scene and you'll see it in class he just naturally lifts it up. The forces in you, Taoism and Star Wars are completely the same. 
the comparisons are all there where you use your own energy inside of yourself this f and you connect in this force and you can do anything you can lift rocks off the ground and stuff like that and you'll see in the movie when I show up uh, the middle path is this idea in Taoism that's very important you need to find a middle path here's the yin here's the yang and this is where you find your energy your chi and um, the white part is feminine its submission its giving you need to give sometimes the yang is masculine it's aggressive it's advancing and you need to do that sometime in your life you can't just be all macho man and you or you can't just be someone who's who's retreating 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 too much of any of those are are bad um, so you gotta find a balance and that's what they're talking about in this let's go down to um, the last part nope it's not there alright well I'll just do it here legalism is the last philosophy legalism is I'll make it very short this comes after Confucianism and is the third school of thought here that um, um, it's the belief that you know what you can't really have these kind of relationships of mutual respect where someone has um, superiority and someone's inferior and they work together um, and this whole Taoism thing what is that it doesn't make any sense there's no 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 just connecting with the spirit I don't get that so legalism this guy comes in and he says um, Han Fazu, but you don't need to know his name, and I'm not even sure if I said it right. Um, he is someone who holds to harsh laws that should be imposed by a strong ruler. That you are selfish people, so the only thing that you'll respond to is by um, rewards or punishments. That's all philosophy and life should be based on. You do good things, you get a reward. You do bad things, you get strongly punished. Here is a quote from the founder, wielding it like lightning or like thunder. That is how you should rule an empire. Um, completely different from Confucianism, um, completely different from Taoism. Um, the rod controls the matter. Might makes right. That's legalism.